Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Don't get me wrong, I love big tanks, just like this 300 gallon, seven foot across tank here from uh, my friends over at Glass Cages. I, I love big tanks, but there's a downside to them. And before you get into your, your dream monster tank, you should be aware that there are some things that make them very, very different from like your 75 gallon on down. These are very different beasts and you have to be aware of certain key points. And I'm gonna cover them with you here. These are things I just want you to consider before investing in that giant tank. I'm not trying to discourage you from getting a big tank. I think it, it's a game changer for anyone in the hobby, but be aware of certain things. First, weight. Be sure that your floors are strong enough to accommodate a large tank. This is several thousand pounds. This is very, very heavy. I'm on a concrete slab in a garage. If I had this on the second floor of a house, I'd probably have problems. On the first floor, I'd have to make sure I'm near a supporting wall and possibly have to reinforce the floor under it. So be very aware of weight as an issue before you actually pick up that giant tank and certainly before you fill it up with water. Now, there is gonna be a difference with an acrylic tank. An acrylic tank is gonna be much lighter. This, this tank here took, I believe, six people. I think it was at least, yeah, at least six of us to put it onto the stand. I moved 150 gallon acrylic between myself and one other gentleman. We simply picked it up and moved it. We would have never been able to do that, this was back in California, if it had been a glass tank. Big difference. So if you're gonna go with an in-the-house tank, especially, if you're not going to be on the ground floor, uh, go with, consider acrylic, all right? Point number two, overall cost. Everything is going to be more expensive. Heating this much water, keeping this water at 78 to 80 degrees is a lot more expensive, at, both in the cost of the heaters, controllers, and the ongoing electricity than it is to keep a 20 gallon or even a 55 gallon tank heated filtration. The filtering and the turning over of water in a tank this size, whether you're using a sump or canister filters, whatever your, your, your filtration of choice, to get the amount of water turnover that you would want for a tank this size, you're going to need some pretty heavy duty filtration running 24-7 and you're going to have to have that backed up. In other words, if something goes wrong, you have to make sure you have some other kind of filter. In my case, I run redundant filters. I run canisters and, and sumps in case one of them goes down. In the case of this tank, I have two pumps in the sump so that if one pump fails, I've got the other one going, right? So you've got weight, you've got uh, cost. And the other thing is that with a larger system, especially if you're dealing with plumbing, there are a lot of different things that can go wrong. In other words, there's more points in the, in the entire system where there can be failures. And when there are failures, because you're dealing with so much water, they can be catastrophic. Let's say, for example, recently I had a leak in one of the, of the hard plumbing pipes behind this aquarium. It was a slow leak, but a few drops at a time from one evening to the next uh, mid-morning, there was a pretty large accumulation of water behind this tank and uh, some soaked wood in the back of this stand. Fortunately, all it took was the tightening of a one-way valve that had somehow with vibration become loose over time and was dripping slowly. That fixed the problem. But if it had been something more major, you could have had a lot of water on the floor. If this tank had been inside the house and had been near a hardwood floor, that floor would have been ruined. But that can happen with a small tank too. Tell the saw, Mr. Ace. I have the plumbing checked immediately. Be sure that you do. If I'd been drinking out of the toilet, I might have been killed. Another point is your water bill. Your water bill is gonna go way up. I do a 30% water change on this tank behind me and I'm at around 100 gallons. Okay, that's, that's a lot more water than a lot of you will change in your tank when you're dealing with a a 29 gallon, a 40 breeder, a 55, a 75. That's 100 gallons. Now, if I'm doing a very ambitious water change and doing two thirds, I'm, I'm up to 200 gallons of water. 
that's uh, 800 gallons a month. That's a lot more than the 10 gallons I'll change on a 29 gallon, coming up to 40 gallons a month. That's a big difference in water use. So right, we're back to the area of cost. Now, to stock an aquarium, to decorate an aquarium with a very large uh, footprint, with a very large amount of real estate, you're gonna need more decor, whether it's more rocks, more plants, whatever that might take. Again, we're back to cost. Now, just as importantly, more so actually, you're gonna need a lot of fish to make that tank look like, it, like it's got something in it. I have a lot of inches of fish in this aquarium. I mean, the si these fish are huge. I'm, but this aquarium by, by African cichlid standards is actually lightly stocked. I could, pro could probably add 10 more fish to this tank. 30 inches or more of fish could be added to this tank, 30 to 40 inches. And those fish will grow into 50 to 60 inches of fish over time or more could be added to this aquarium very, very easily, very easily. So you're gonna have a, a greater cost of fish. That means more food, that means more filtration. And you also have the added issue in my case that you have to buy these fish pretty large. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to add them to an aquarium like this for a very long time. It'll take over a year to grow a fish out to this size to make it compact. So I have to buy these fish already large to be able to group them with these fish. And so instead of paying $15, $10 for a small fish to grow out, I'm gonna, I'll pay $75, $50 to $75 for a large mature male that can be added to this group. That's the downside. That's the downside of a large tank. Water volume, decor, you're gonna need four or 500 pounds of, of uh, substrate if you wanna run a deep substrate or 500 pounds of substrate, you're gonna need uh, uh, all that additional. And then lighting, what about lighting? You know, to light this much tank. I've got three of these, three of these on here. These are like 46 inches each, three of them, to barely get the job done. So again, each one of those is about 100, 100 bucks, 300 bucks just in lighting. All that being said, when I, when I, when I sit in front of this aquarium and I lose myself in this tank and I watch the interaction, the long distance of swimming or in front of the 210 gallon, which is over here to my side here, and I'm looking at the depth of the tank or when I get on the side and look at the side view of the tank, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. You're, you're, you get lost in it. Uh, the pleasure is multiplied a hundred times over the pleasure that I would get, let's say looking at a 20, my 29 gallon, gallon beta tank, which I love, I think it's a beautiful tank, but it doesn't give me anywhere near the satisfaction and pleasure of staring into a tank like this with these kinds of beasts interacting with me and the color, the look in their eyes, the in, there's just nothing like it. There's just nothing like a big giant tank. And for those of you out there with monster tanks, comment in the, below, let me know what you think about owning a tank. Tell me the pluses, tell me the minuses, and I'd love to hear your comments. Some of them I might include in an upcoming video. Maybe we'll do big tanks part two and uh, go from there. If you like the channel, be sure to hit the uh, thumbs up, subscribe, hit that bell, and consider becoming a monthly supporter, a Patreon member, a member of the Garage Gang. This is a garage, that's my garage door. And uh, see me on Saturday and participate with a big group of fish keepers at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. It's a lot of fun. Great group of fish keepers get together every Saturday for an hour. We talk about everything related to fish. And last, if you want to continue finding out my best tips about taking care of fish in aquariums, watch these, these videos here for tips on water changes and maintenance. Check this out. And if you want to know more about canisters, check this one out, this playlist. And if you want to uh, subscribe, hit me in the mug right up here. Thank you, my friends. Bye-bye.